Hi, you're with us, the Factory's Food Network, with Chef Eddie making beef rendang. Hello. Assalamualaikum. Um, hi, I'm Chef Eddie from the Fried Chili's Food Network. So today, uh, actually I'm going to make a beef rendang, which is a um, very famous dish to serve during Raya. Okay, so you can pick this recipe up when you're cooking for your, you know, it does with your open house or something. Now, rendang is a very traditional Malay dish. Okay, there's a, there, are, there are various kinds. Um, there's, some are spicier than others, some are drier, some are a bit more moist. The one I'm going to do today is maybe something in between. Okay, I got this recipe from my mother, which I think is one of the best cooks in the world, if I might say so. Okay, so um, without further ado, let's start. So for rendang, of course, the most important thing you need are your rempah base. So uh, what I have here is um, lemongrass, I have shallots, I have kaffir lime leaf, or limau purut as the Malays call it, uh, ginger, lengkuas or galangal, uh, chili bo, um, milk or rather pounded grinded chili, um, I'm using beef. This is a quite lean but tender cut. You cannot to choose a tougher cut, but you, of course you need to cook it longer. Lah. Uh, santan, um, this is my blended spice mix. Okay, This is my daun kunyit, turmeric leaves. I have asam jawa, tamarind, and krise, which is dried um, cooked coconut. What do you call it? Kernels, isn't it? Coconut kernels, found it. Okay? Um, so to start with, you need about roughly two or three stalks of lemongrass or serai. I used two shallots, about my size of my thumb of ginger. So this is about, okay, I, have, I have quite large hands. So this is um, five, six centimeters, right? And about another five or six centimeters of lengkuas. So you just cut these up roughly, put them in a blender, give it a blitz with the chili bowl, and of course a bit of water just to give it some go. Okay? After that, you go, you'll be ready to start your rendang. Okay? So I have a big pot, big pan rather, put in the fire. It's a bit hot because you need that to be hot. Lah. Okay, there you go. Now put in your oil. Okay, put in your oil. I'm going to use about three to four tablespoons of oil. Okay. Now, I think there's quite a hallmark of local dishes to be a bit oily. But of course, um, what's life without some oil, isn't it? I mean, the fattier food is. It makes it nice, right? <laughs> makes it nice. So let's heat up the oil. Okay, now in this big bowl over here, I have my rumpa mix. Okay, I have my rumpa mix. It's blended quite fine. Um, you don't want it to be too rough or too, you know, very fibrous and stuff. You don't want it, you don't want when people eat your rendang and they go like, <laughs> like that. So blend it quite fine, right? My oil is heating up nicely. I'm going to add this in now. Watch out for splatter. Oh, that's not so bad, okay? <laughs> not so bad. Now, rendang technically usually takes an hour or so to cook, depending on what kind of meat and the quantities that you're making. So I'm going to stand a bit further away now. Can you still see me? Okay, good. Hang on, okay? So it's, sometimes it's quite long to cook. I'm going to show you... A pretty basic recipe, a pretty basic recipe, and of course, I have some secrets on my sleeve, right? So now we're going to cook this spice mix until it's a bit fragrant. Okay. Start to smell all the lovely chili, the, the lemongrass, the shallots all coming through. I'm going to cook this a bit until what the Malays call pecah minyak. I mean, I know in English translated, it literally means breaking oil, but I don't think that's a real technical term. Uh, what will happen is, as you cook it down, you'll see the oil separate. It'll start to separate from the paste. Now, we know at that point, the flavors are pretty much already um, sort of like booming out of your spice mix. So when you see your oil starting to separate, that's when you add in your next ingredient, which will be your coconut milk. Okay. Now in the old days, okay, in the old days, of course, um, we ground our spices with the big grinding stone, okay? That thing that looks like a sacrificial slab, to be honest. Um, of course, now in the modern times, we use blenders, which is far more convenient. Although some uh, some traditionalists might argue that grinding using a stone actually yields a better tasting product. I mean, there might be some merit to that, because I know sambal belacan made using a lesung is so much nicer compared to a blended one, but, okay, no scientific research, but 
Okay, no problem. Okay, so my, my rendang has started to pecah minyak. You can start to see the oil come out. And the smell, okay. Uh, I hope I, I hope everyone in the studio actually smells this. Yeah. Uh, Kani is rubbing, my producer is actually rubbing her tummy right now. Bossa, bossa. Okay, it's going to be <laughs> like a few more hours to do this. Now I'm adding in my coconut milk. Uh, I used boxed coconut milk, the ones they sell in cartons. Uh, you can, of course, opt to get your coconut milk freshly squeezed. But I use this as a safer, uh, less less risk, you know, less, less risk involved because of safety and stuff. This is pasteurized, so you, have, you, can, you can use it for a long time. Okay, that is my sun time. Now this is just regular sun time. There's no like double step. Ah, smells nice. Okay. This is nine. Next up is uh, tamarind juice. I just, just took the pulp of the tamarind, asam jawa. Okay, asam jawa. Just a little bit, maybe about a tablespoon. This gives your rendang a nice, nice tart flavor. Okay. A bit of sweetness as well. Next is your turmeric leaf. I add, I'm adding this quite early because I want the flavor of the turmeric leaf, the fragrance especially, to come out. Or as the Matsalia call it, infuse, infusing my rendang with turmeric leaves. And next up are a few sprigs of um, kaffir lime or limon puret. Just break them apart. Check it inside. There. Once you add in your kaffir lime leaves and your turmeric leaves, you can actually start smelling the aromas coming out. It's actually quite a lovely dish. I mean. Whenever the whenever you know tourists come over to our country, I mean, uh, they always ask for rendang, or even TV shows always show rendang because it's such a quintessentially Malaysian dish. Even though you find different versions as you go, you know, north, south, in the peninsula, or even I don't know Sabah, Sarawak. Okay, sticking out nicely. Now I'm adding in my beef. Now, uh, after I add in my beef, okay, I'm gonna simmer it on slow fire. And a note about beef, Oops. try to get cuts which are not that fatty. Go for a quite a lean cut. You know why? Because if you go for a fatty cut, one, as you cook it down, the fat from the beef itself is going to pretty much come out of the meat. It'll make your rendang very, very greasy. Some people do like that anyway, but Sometimes it gets a bit, it gets a bit overwhelming because you already have your santan, you have your beef. You don't want to make a rich dish too rich. And another thing, because you're going to cook it for a long time, fattier beef tends to break down into tends to turn mushy. That's what I mean. Okay, tends, tends to turn mushy. So go for a leaner cut, a leaner cut which is uh, you know more muscular, where you are going to cook this for about an hour or so. So. Leaner cuts will, um, they sort of, how do I say this? Leaner cuts, they do better in slow braised dishes like this. That's what I mean, okay? Right. Okay. So, during Hari Raya, in my house anyways, in my house during Hari Raya, we normally serve rendang with, uh, my mom makes nasi minyak, okay, with her very own recipe of nasi minyak. And of course, Malaysians will eat it with ketupat, or with the ever famous lemang, the bamboo rice, normally sold on the roadside. Okay, if you can't find those bamboo rice, of course you can buy in the supermarket nowadays and just boil it in your pot. But whenever you can, always try to find the authentic, uh, authentic versions because flavors will just be so much more better. It will, and it, it, you know, you already made the rendang, you give your effort for it. You don't want to uh, ruin it with some instant food, do you? So go for the authentic experience. Anyways, hi Raya, come on. Give your customers something nicer, something you know, a bit sweeter to 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 commemorate this special occasion. So this, I'm gonna turn down the fire to slow heat. I'm gonna let this simmer down for roughly an hour or so. Uh, you can check from time to time to see if the beef is cooked, and make sure you stir. 
because you don't want the bottom of the pot to get burnt and then ruin all that hard work and effort and you end up with no rendang for raya which is very very sad okay now this is gonna cook for hmm? ah, I'm gonna talk about the Chris yeah honey is my producer is talking about the Chris here okay now this will cook down for an hour or so until it gets quite dry and quite pasty Okay, at the end of that process, I'm going to add in the crease, which is the uh, fried, the fried uh, coconut husk or kernels. This adds a lovely nutty aroma and flavor to your rendang, as well as a beautiful, beautiful texture. It'll give the rendang its characteristic, um, you know, characteristic texture and flavor. Okay. And of course, I can actually show you one that I made earlier. See that? Cooks down to a really thick, really, really chunky and luxurious texture with coconut and curise. You can check out my beef here. Maybe I can show you some. Okay. Check that out. Okay. Lovely, lovely, lovely. Now just imagine this with your ketupat and your lemang. Isn't that beautiful? This is going to make your raya very, very special. So that's my beef rendang recipe for Raya. I hope you do check it out, do try it out. Uh, recipes will be on the fried chili site, of course. And um, have a very happy Raya and Selamat Ramadan. Thank you very much. <laughs>